producers behind the scenes at Score North and 1500 ESPN have sports opinions. So they want you to hear them. It's the perfect digital sports soapbox to scratch that Minnesota sports itch. This is the Score North Taxi Squad. Becky's lasagna is good, but I don't think it's going to be good enough to mend the bridge between Glenn Taylor, Mark Laurie, and Alex Rodriguez. Welcome into the Score North Taxi Squad, everyone. My name is Jason Stormer, joined along Artist Woods, and from my talk, 1071 joining us again, Grant Wankstern. What's going on, fellas? How you doing? How you feeling this week? Good? Everything good with your Easter Sundays and everything? How we feeling? Everything's well, man. Everything's well, probably as well as it can be. You know, uh-huh. just chilling, you know, watching the Wolves, hopefully get another W tonight. Um, so I was in the building for last night's game, which was pretty oh, nice. You were there. Um, I was there. I was That's there. Nice. I was there. So um yeah, man. Uh feeling good. Obviously we got a little Vikings to talk, got some wolves to talk. I'm excited. I'm excited. And twins. Yeah. It's that, that yeah. time of year, boys. It's spring. Year. Yeah. Our best players are already getting hurt for the Minnesota uh, Twins. We'll get that we'll into We'll save that agony for Yeah, later. we'll get to that in a bit. But obviously, I opened the show talking about uh, Becky's lasagna. As you guys already know, uh, the deal has fallen through between Glenn Taylor, <laughs> Mark Laurie, and Alex Rodriguez. Something that maybe, guys, we should have seen coming for quite a long time now because our own Darren Doogie Wolfson has pretty much been on top of what has been going on with the story pretty much. Ever since when the finances started getting a little iffy with A-Rod and Lori, he has been on it pretty much since the last six months, even up until when these last investor group kind of pulled out at the very last minute. Um, Yeah, you guys heard the news, saw the headline, Glenn Taylor saying that the Wolves are no longer for sale. He did say as well that he will continue to work with Mark and Alex and the rest of the ownership group to ensure our teams have the necessary resources to compete at the highest levels Ah. on and off the court. And then he also finished the quote with, the Timberwolves and Lynx are no longer longer for sale dun dun it's like the law and order sound you know what dun, i mean dun, it's dun, just dun, epic dun. and the response gentlemen the response from ayla Ooh. rod and Lori has just been absolutely juicy themselves um obviously um they probably felt a little blindsided by all this and didn't exactly feel too uh <laughs> thrilled when they got the news as they pull up some of the quotes that they had it was just absolutely juicy um <laughs> i can't believe that this is a quote i'm actually going to read from mark Lori. quote We're going to be the owners of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh It's just a matter of time and how much pain Glenn wants to put the fans, the players, the town, and the community through. Uh It's his choice. It didn't have to be this way. Uh, Laurie and A-Rod have also hopped on with Dane Moore and Kyle Teige as well. Um, for Dane Moore's podcast, also had some pretty scathing things to pretty much say about everything that's going on with Glenn Taylor and this whole deal. Guys, look, we are fighting for a number one seed in the Western Conference right now, and this is not at all the distraction I thought that we as Timberwolves fans were going to have to deal with um, this week, and obviously now for the next several weeks. We don't know what how long this process is going to take. I, I'm guessing, I mean, this is going to have its day in court, and it is going to just get juicier and juicier. But guys, Guys, how are you feeling about all this? And do you honestly think that potentially this could be a distraction for the Wolves as we, again, try to get the number one seed in the Western Conference here? Let me just say, uh, th- that last quote, that last quote. Yes. Um, who, was the, who was the person who said the last? Lori, Lori did. Lori did. I just yeah. want to say, Lori, if you're watching Taxi Squad, huh. you brought up the pain and the agony that the fans <laughs> and the players and everybody has to go through. And I don't know if you've heard this already, and I say this with the utmost respect. We don't care. <laughs> we do not care. I'm so sorry. Like I, no. I, I, you know, if you guys haven't watched Four Wolves Takes, go check it out. I said it on there. We, we, we don't care. Uh, the Wolves are playing great basketball. They're fighting, like Jason said, for the number one seed. I can assure you, there are not a ton of people right now thinking about what's going on with ownership and who's going to own the team. The players could use it as a distraction, and this could break up some locker rooms. This could, you know, distract some basketball teams. I won't mention any teams, but it could, you know, some you know, some teams aren't built as tough or as strong as the Timberwolves, as crazy as, as that sounds. You know, the Timberwolves haven't always been mentally tough either, but they are now, right? This this is not something that's going to distract anybody, and if it would, it would have happened already, right? Um, I'm not worried about it at all. I honestly am very out of touch. This is my first time actually hearing these exact quotes. I know things were, yes, I know things were said. I know things were said, but I haven't taken the time to actually look into the quotes. It's been like, oh, the owners are going back and forth. And I'm just like, okay, cool. How about you Uh, just pay your bill? Yeah, I mean, that. I mean, you had this deal set in 2021. You could have just. 
paid the bill when you had the opportunity, yeah. and you'd be fine. Yeah. Or maybe just don't try to buy things when you don't have, have liquid yeah. for it. I just wanted him to just, like, 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 hearing that makes it seem like it's about things that it's not. And I just want to, before you guys go, it's not about the fans. It's not to me, to me, to you, and I'm going to argue that the fans me. might pay for it though. In I was going to say run, in the so, long run, yeah, but, but go right on, now, go on, right, right, now, right now. Let's yeah, I'm right now about, in the moment, right in the now, moment, in I the get moment, you. it's in my opinion not about the fans. Yeah. In my opinion, not really about the players. We don't care. That's my take. Uh, we'll, we'll see. You I could be wrong. You haven't but, dealt with Glenn Taylor for a long time, my right, man. Okay. Right. And, 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 you know, you guys, so you guys, true. you guys can inform me of of how this affects. The Timberwolves and the fans, and then maybe I'll change my take, or maybe I'll just still say, and, yeah. we don't care." Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like you know, rightfully so. Because I mean, you, you guys, you guys, inform me, inform me. Okay, so Glenn Taylor obviously has kind of had tumultuous ownership with the Minnesota Timberwolves. We don't really need to get into no, all of that. I don't think we deets, need to get no. into how we saved the team from New Orleans. Every and every Minnesota thing. fan knows. Yeah, you know. I, we we don't need to get that. What and, we and, obviously and not to interrupt, I'm yes. not from the area, That's so if, good, I'm not touche. from Minnesota. He's a Lakers so, fan. Yeah. No, Either way, no. even being a Lakers fan, I'm not from Minnesota, so I don't know all <laughs> but of you the do background. Know, you do know the team, so I'll give. I you, do know, you the, know team. the team. I just don't know the background and, and all of fair. that. So Very besides fair. the players and the history of the team, I don't know the history of the ownership. We so. had a bad history with this guy. And honestly, it's not necessarily like it's an ownership mired in controversy. You know, it's not like Glenn Taylor has. You know, like been a controversial figure, like some other owners have been in his position. It's more just making really bad choices. Yeah, it, it's been you know, yeah. it's been the the David Cons, it, it's been the Tom Thibodeaus, even to an extent. Uh, the list goes on and on, and just how inept this Wolves franchise has been for several several years until now. And Glenn, I mean, we just we just haven't had any success. And so the team, so when the news about Lori and Arod going to when they bought the team or allegedly bought the team, a lot of fans <laughs> were really optimistic about that, just because yeah. the team had just been mired in mediocrity for so yes. long. And and I'm not sitting here saying that like Glenn Taylor didn't give it a try. I think he did. I think he had really good intentions and has had really good intentions uh, throughout his ownership as the Timberwolves owner. It just hasn't worked out. Over and over and over again. Mm. And clearly, I mean, this is just another notch in the belt for him uh, for this deal to fall through. Um, a lot of people are accusing Glenn of buyer's remorse as of right now because when they send pen to paper for this deal, I mean, he was selling for $1.5 billion, and now the team is worth over $2.5 billion. Yeah. And Glenn has even been on the record saying that he has to think about the other, other investors, investors and yep. stuff like that, the people that have actually been in the Wolves' ownership for a lot longer yep. than Laurie and A-Rod. Yep. But again, my response to Lori and A-Rod themselves is what Grant just alluded to. Pay your tax. You, you got to get the money together quicker than this. You had so he much did. time. These deals get done a lot quicker than two and a half years. They, yeah. they just do. Yeah. And for whatever reason, this is the agreement that they came to. And it's probably because Lori and A-Rod just didn't have the money up front. It's like they tried to buy an NBA franchise the way that someone leases a car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because when you're leasing a car, you don't necessarily have have the money to buy that car up front. That is why you're leasing it. But also, with the lease, you have the option to turn that car in. And obviously, that's not something that Lori and A-Rod could do in this situation. And now they're stuck with this 36%. Obviously, they're going to try to fight to get the majority. But, like, Glenn has barred them from Target Center at this point. Maybe not necessarily, like, completely limited their access, but has limited their access a significant amount. I don't think they can, like, interact with players and stuff. And, like, I think they've come to an agreement to do this weird, like, joint custody kid, like, like they're divorced <laughs> parents, Gross. where A-Rod and Lori are going to go on the road with the team, and Taylor and Becky are going to sit on their courtside seats like they normally do it is just it's it's fascinating i mean the the relationship between these these two entities has deteriorated deteriorated behind the scenes over the last couple years but i didn't think it was going to get to this because just a couple weeks ago we heard about the 300 million being pulled out by that investor group but then like a day later we had somebody another investor group fill that and i just thought okay you know what this is big business. I don't understand what the heck is going on. So I'm just going to assume that, you know, this is just kind of the logistics of the deal. I'm not going to freak out about anything. But again, Doogie has been reporting this. He's been on this from the get-go. And then, boom, we get about a week ago on Thursday that Glenn Taylor says, you guys missed your deadline for the final payment. The deal is off. And now we are going to have just some epic deliberation in court over all of this. I see it kind of both sides, gentlemen. I see kind of both parties at fault because, you know, Glenn 
probably could have given these guys an extension if they if you wanted but to. Why, I mean, this why would he before. though? When the Suns were just sold for four billion, mm. and the Dallas Mavericks were sold for three point five billion. Not that they're the same comparable franchise, but you had your deadline. You've had over what now since twenty twenty one, right? It's it was, true. You had true. three years to pay your damn. Oh, pad. it's true. But if things were like good between everything, and this was just you know yeah. just a little bump in the road, Taylor could have easily given them an extension. It, it yeah. could have done it. It's but it's money. like he used this extension as the final straw. straw. Absolutely. And it's just like, all right, I'm done with this. And clearly it wasn't the the souring of the relationship wasn't as public. You know, I don't think all of us knew that it got this bad to the point where, all right, now the deal's off. But here we are. We're talking about it with our team in the thick of the Western Conference race. And again, as Dane Moore has said this a million times, I will steal this quote from him. This is just the weirdest team ever. This is the weirdest team ever because when we should be focusing on, obviously, this playoff run that we're about to have, something like this comes up and only, only the Minnesota Timberwolves can provide us with such fodder. And I agree with you that it is fodder. It's interesting. But I'm going to agree with Artis that in this moment right now, this team is not going to be focused, and I point over there because the game's on. The game is on right uh, now, yes. But th- this <laughs> team is not going to be focused on that. I think that they are, I think they're built well enough where they're going to keep their mind on the situation at hand, but what I'm worried about is the future. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. how much is 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 Glenn Taylor going to invest in this team? How much are his in- current owners going to invest in this team when they were already willing to walk away from the table? I don't want, I don't want A-Rod or Lori anymore, and I don't want Glenn Taylor. Mm-hmm. Personally, I want someone to come in and take the whole thing because I want a, 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 I want I want a group of owners that are going to work together in the future to try to provide this team with the best opportunities to be the best team that they can be possible. Right now, there's nothing to change. What you got is what you got. But in the coming years, when this team is now finally getting its first step into stardom, which mm-hmm. it hasn't seen for 20 years, now we have no leadership at the top whatsoever. You have, like you said, divorcing parents, fighting like children, <laughs> but for a good reason, because it's not like it's over 20 bucks. Right. Glenn no. Taylor is, in my mind, every right to do what he did. Mm-hmm. Do I wa- do I like it? No. Would I wish Lori and A Rod could have come up with the money? Yes, we all do. But like I said, when the Suns sell for four billion dollars, not comparable franchise, and the Dallas Mavericks for three point five, and you were going to sell this team for one point five yeah. billion, you've got to jump that. I mean, you, you yeah. it's like you know, it's like a bill. You have to pay your bills every month. They've had their time, their quota, their their end date. They didn't reach the end date. Now there's a penalty fee. Right. And the penalty right. fee is, unfortunately, you don't get to own the team. And if Glenn Taylor actually did something illegal here, he did. it'll be proven in court. And, he, and, and A-Rod and Lori will own the team. It may take a year or two as yeah. we deliberate this whole process. But I don't think he did. I, yeah, I don't think he did it either. I don't, I don't know, I think but... These guys got powerful enough lawyers where, obviously, I'm guessing Taylor sought counsel before he made this decision. And... But I have a question for you. Okay. If those words, I mean, why would Lori and A-Rod say what they said if they didn't? I mean, would you just, I mean, would you be that stupid to go out there and just say that kind of stuff without well, having receipts? That's a fair point. That's true. That's so true. that's my only thing is yeah, that no, they might that, have a case. I, I wouldn't go out there doing that. I mean, and Grant. Oh, sorry. Right, well, go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, Jason, because I well, want to say mean, something off. The, I also you know. think it's a response because Glenn Taylor did media rounds. He went on radio shows. Yeah. He went on TV, including having a conversation yeah. with Darren Doogie Wolfson as well, just kind of explaining his side of the story before I think A-Rod and Lori could get their side of the story out. Got it. And so I think that's. I think that's just fair media, yeah. you know, button heads kind of thing in a situation like this. You know, we just want each side of the story to be told yeah. kind of thing. So I think that's a I think it was a fair response okay. by Arod and Lori and and obviously they they felt pretty blindsided by all this, oh, and yeah. they're ready to go. They're ready to wage war with uh, the Taylors, and it's going to so, be interesting. So Glenn Taylor. Glenn saved Taylor. the Star Tribune, by the way. Let's just let's give him one yes. little. He saved the Star Tribune. So I okay. did. He okay. did. A little, little knock for that. Okay. Yeah. Good job. He was the owner when Anthony Edwards was drafted, right? Yes. He's yeah. been the owner he, the whole time. The owner when the Rudy Gobert trade was happened, right? Yeah, yes. but you're not going to link anything to him for this, are you? What I'm saying is you brought up the point of is he like him investing in the team and his and his players and or his 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 uh, partners investing in the team going forward. And my thing with that is like 
Now he's in a position with a team that can win, and it's proven they can win. Maybe Woody, not in the playoffs right. yet. Okay. But he's in a position now with a team where it's like he has a reason to fight to keep this team right now. It's it's true. He a does. huge reason. You got a budding superstar in Anthony Edwards. Carl Anthony Towns is still on the roster. Rudy yeah. Rudy's playing out of his mind. They're fighting for the number one seed in the West. They make a run this year. Yeah. He's probably going to be more invested than he's ever been to Hopefully. try to ensure that this team stays connected and this team has the tools around that is needed to continue to win. Because there will be moves that have to be made. Yeah. I mean, the money that Cat is making and Rudy's making and I mean, you know the salary cap and all that, that that's going to come into play within the next year or so this offseason. Yeah. Some moves will be made. But I think it will be a different story if the team wasn't competitive. Yeah. If oh, the yeah. team wasn't competitive, oh, yeah. it's like, yeah, he's like, man, 100%. forget it, it is what it is. But the team being as good as it is and, what? last thought, last thought okay. this situation could also light a fire in him as well. It could. And because a lot of people uh, probably feel the way you feel that, you yeah. know, he's been responsible for this, this, this. We don't know how much he's going to put into the team XYZ. We don't know how much his partners are going to put in the team. Well, now this situation, I know a lot of people would rather have A-Rod and Lori in the building. And he's probably like, yo, I can prove I'm still, you know, I or I can your, I be. I love your attitude. I, listen, I'm, I'm optimistic, hey, man. Hey. I, I, the Wolves have me feeling optimistic, <laughs> but, which is why I initially said, man, you know, maybe maybe this comes back to bite me, and I'll have to own that and eat yeah. crow. It yeah. is what it is. But, like, the way I see it right now, the team being this good, I feel like can inspire him and make him be an even – I don't know how great of an owner he's been, but a Agreed. better owner, Get, in let, my opinion. Let me ask you a question. Give me yeah. one free agent, not a trade, Rudy Gobert trade, Mike mm-hmm. Conley trade, done by the GM. Okay. That has nothing to do with Glenn Taylor. Mm-hmm. Give me one big – guy that they brought into this team that they signed that wasn't drafted by this team. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. In the last point. five years. I mean, give me a I name. Mean, that Jimmy, Jimmy was, a tra- was traded for a while yep, back, Jimmy right? Was Jimmy was, was traded. Everything, That's a fair point. Towns was drafted. Edwards was drafted. Reed was drafted. I'm All these guys were drafted. That There has been, in my eyes, since 2024, since we brought in um, uh, uh, Latrell Sprewell and... Um, the alien, I hate saying that, but you know uh, the guy from oh, uh, oh Sam Cassell. Uh, Sam, Sam Cassell. Cassell. Yeah. Since we brought in those two guys, that's just that was an old nickname. That was yeah, terrible. No, no, you're good, you're that's good, you're terrible. Good. But um, <laughs> since those two guys, I mean, I haven't seen this team go out and make efforts to bring guys in to surround their good players. Now they've done it great with trades. Now the and I'll and I'll admit, I'll be the first to admit, I was so wrong about the Rudy Gobert trade. Mm-hmm. I mean, we gave up a lot, but the we way were that all man wrong. is, we were all wrong. that man is playing at a level like I have never seen. So I'm mm-hmm. happy that we did that now, and I have to say I was wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns have worked out great. You know, Russell was a horrible trade. That was a horrible. I mean, we got rid of a guy that we didn't want to have, but yeah. it ended up bringing us Mike Conley. Right. But again, all these moves that have made in my eyes this team perfect are through the draft and through trades, which but, is a genius. But that's but that's right. But at the same time, though, that's still, I feel like he still has a piece of that. Maybe not all of it. Okay. Right. As long as, as he sit still, court, as long as he keeps sitting courtside, the man cares. I mean, we can't, I mean, we can't deny call, that. I, I just, and I he just has sat like court. He sat courtside through a lot of bad games. <laughs> I just got to admit, like, Glenn Taylor has seen more bad basketball in this town probably than anybody else. There's not a ton of teams <laughs> in the NBA right now that are competitive that are making a ton of moves in free agency. No. Most of the moves that they are making <laughs> are via the draft You're or right. via yeah. trades. Good call. And so that's that's my like the Lakers may be like one of the few teams I go and like, and even then they're. They're going and trading, trading. for Anthony. Yeah. You know, they, they signed LeBron, but that's yeah. when they had Magic in and that type of thing. Yeah. The Warriors. Think about the Warriors, how they built their dynasty. Yeah. They drafted Steph Curry. Yep. They drafted Klay Thompson. They drafted, you know, Draymond Green, yeah. right? And so, and then they brought in other guys. Um, I'm trying to, I think they drafted um, Harrison Barnes as well. I think they traded for um, Sean Livingston. So it's like, that's how a lot of teams are building right now anyway. Same right. thing with OKC, yep. another young team. They drafted a lot of their players. Um, they did trade, I believe, for Shea Gilders Alexander, but he wasn't a free agent. They drafted um, um, Chet. Yep. So, yep. like, so like that's uh, that's kind of the way of the Dort. NBA yep. is going. The last big, and I could be wrong, so correct me, audience, if I'm wrong, but yeah. the last huge free agents, free agent signing that, that I could think of that really shifted the powers in the NBA was when KD signed with Golden State. You're right. There was not, <laughs> that was you know, such a terrible Fourth of July. That's that, that's the last. That's <laughs> that the last. The worst. Like, that's that was like the, the worst. last like dramatic shift in power. The, like I said, the Lakers yeah. signed the, the signed money is LeBron, so big. but that You're didn't, right. Right. didn't necessarily switch so, powers that much until they traded for Anthony contract. Davis. You know, yeah. um, the Clippers. Yes, they did sign um, Kawhi. Kawhi. 
I believe they traded for Paul, or I yep, know they, they signed. They, or they, they, might, they might have signed Paul George. But the point is, it's not happening like no, crazy. It's no, they traded for Paul like, George because they traded Shea to OKC. Yes, that's right. They yes. traded yes. Shea to OKC. So the point is, Man, if they still had Shea. The, the, the competitive teams <laughs> in the league right now, off the top of my head, there's not a ton of them that are making a bunch of right. you know free yeah, agent I, signings to be competitive. Most of them are drafting and trading to build yeah. their teams. Max, max contracts may play a big deal in that. Speaking yeah. of which, I found this article that was published September 3rd, 2023. Is that recent enough for you guys? The eight best free agent signings in Timberwolves history? Mm. Again, not just Let's from this it. past September. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I, th- I mean, this, this I, it proves our point. This, 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 this may have killed, but this may kill yeah. everything I just said at the same time. At number eight, Andre Kirilenko in 2012. AK-47, not, not too bad. You know, good with the Jesse was okay here, but, like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, yeah. He yeah, was yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Terry Porter in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> you guys weren't even born. I was born, sir. 95? 94. 94. I was a baby. I was a baby in 95. I'm 30. My God. Terry uh, Porter, I love Terry. Fred Hoiberg in 03. Freddie Hoy knows <laughs> how to coach a ball yes, game. Yes, sir. Cornhuskers, let's go. Uh, Trenton Hassel in 03. I don't even know. I don't even oh, remember Trent that Hassel. name. Oh, Trenton Hassel. Uh, he was the... Trenton Hassel was the wasn't he the the rapper the he was the guy that backed up um, Sam Cassell Trenton Hassel wasn't he the I don't remember him. no that's Troy Hudson Troy Hudson <laughs> who I'm was the Troy next Hudson. one Troy Hudson in 2002 I remember Troy over, Hudson they way overpaid for him yes yep. Uh, he was actually really fun in the old uh, EA uh, NBA Live games. I yeah. remember Troy Hudson, Chauncey Billups in two thousand. Uh, I the, like Billups. The infamous in Joe Smith signing yeah, of nineteen ninety nine, and then Joe number Smith. one, Sam Mitchell in nineteen eighty nine. Thank so, you. So my point is exactly proven. This guy has no track record of spending money. Thank you, Jason. Maybe not necessarily spending money. He spends money. He gives us players like max contracts. It's just outside of that. Bringing free agents in here to Minnesota has been a struggle, which, again, there are other elements besides ownership that make it tough to bring free agents to Minnesota. The fact that it gets cold and it snows and there's places like L.A. and Miami where players can play their seasons. I I totally get it. You haven't really had a star player the likes of Anthony Edwards since KG. But we, again, well, since we we traded KG, we had to do Jeffers. But, uh, but I still but think wasn't. we weren't even able to bring in a ton of massive talent to surround KG with, too. I mean, Sam Cassell oh, and Luttrell was... were great, but like that was just enough to get us to a Western Conference final. Run I mean, nobody was more. beating Kobe and Shaq at that time. Though. If Sam Cassell right. doesn't go out with the yeah, back in that true. series, yeah, yeah, yeah. I give them a shot. That's, I, I don't say we I give them a shot. I give them a shot. Troy Hudson chance. came in there and balled <laughs> and got himself paid because of it. That's true. But he never developed anything after that. So, no, no. All right. So, last. That was a fun little road. Uh, yes, I like yes. I like that. that yeah, fun. we go down a lot of different roads here on Taxi Squad. <laughs> uh, last thing I will say really quick out of this whole thing, no matter what happens, no matter if Taylor owns the team or your A-Rod owns the team, what I am happy about, gentlemen, is that at least – Tim Connolly is in the building because, like you guys mentioned, we are going to need a lot of stability over the next couple of years. We're going to need an ownership to pony up some money because this luxury tax is coming up next year, guys. We got to have an ownership willing to go over that next year. So, as you mentioned, Grant, this is going to have a pretty immediate effect next after year. the season is over. But if we need some stable ground throughout all this, I'm hoping Tim Connolly is going to be just that. I have every indication that he is running this organization very well. Sure, we were iffy about the Rudy Gobert trade but i think we've come around oh, to oh. that as of now based off how good the team is yeah. how great he's playing he's going to be the defensive player of the year awesome. if we yeah. had uh if we had honestly even if gerson rosas were still leading this club i would feel iffy about just exactly how yeah how that general manager would be able to keep things stable at least in the front office while all this is going on but i think tim conley is so damn good at his job that. It will be a situation, hopefully, for these Wolves players where it will not be a distraction on the court for the players as this is playing out. And gentlemen, as we now transition actually into the games themselves for the Timberwolves, because yes, they actually played basketball this week, heaven forbid. I don't think they felt distracted whatsoever by the situation with that win on the road against the Denver Nuggets being up, what, 62 to 43 at halftime. Just one of the more dominant performances by the team all season long. I'll say right now for the Denver Nuggets, um, Look, I know Jokic had a sore wrist and everything, but could you give the man some help in the paint? Yeah, My God, nothing. the Wolves had 
anything, and I mean anything, they wanted in the paint. No help for Jokic at all. It was honestly a little bit embarrassing. I don't know if the Nuggets just weren't feeling it because Jamal Murray wasn't playing for them, which, by the way, goodness sakes, I just want these two teams to play healthy because I can't get a yeah, full read for them when they do this it, yeah. kind of stuff. Jamal Murray played the game at Target Center just recently, but then he didn't play, and now it's just like, oh my gosh, I want these two teams to kind of meet in the playoffs, and then we know once yeah. again based off of last year. But then I'll you have see, the loss. Oh, I'll sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead, I was Jason. just going to say, go ahead, go I was just going to say, then we have the kind of disappointing loss to the Bulls, but the Bulls shot 58% from three that game. What do you do? Team. But then they a comeback are. win they're against the team. Rockets, and the Rockets were, were one of the hotter teams in the NBA. They yeah, were they were. Like, uh, they won like 11 in a row. He is insane, man. Uh, he anyway, miss. bro, he couldn't. He was insane. I mean, and they kept letting him shoot. He was insane. It was it was a bad yeah. defensive night. I think it was like kind of an emotional let. You know how it is. You beat a powerhouse team, and then the next game, yeah. we got the Bulls. Okay, yeah. I don't but at the same kind time, of sleep the Bulls, we just said get that mentality they're, out they're, of your they're head. They're decent, you yeah. know. They're they're decent, you know. They you, you you're right, Jason. You're not supposed to have that mentality, but the Wolves are due for a kind of a letdown game. That's just that's honestly yeah. how I viewed it. They were due for a letdown game. For and beating the as, Nuggets, I was kind of like okay with it. I was just like, but if you lost to the Rockets at home, then I was yeah, going to have yes, to start having now problems. That's, that's when it would have become yes. an issue. That's when but, it would have yes. become an issue. But now not, that we're talking about the Rockets, let's take a second to talk about the end of that game. They had, mo- and I'm happy with that win. Yes, but they, what, what was it, Va- Van Leer, uh, Van, Van Fleet, Fleet. Fred Van, Van Fleet, Fred Van Fleet. That boy couldn't <sighs> miss a shot oh, either, yeah, and they kept cooking. letting it. They kept letting him shoot three kept, pointers, he, and I'm yeah. like, boy, he like, was getting, he got hot towards yeah. the end, and I think <laughs> yeah. honestly, yeah. the He's so vibe good. I got, I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. The vibe I got was they got comfortable, and the reason why I say they got comfortable is. It felt like we all got comfortable in that building. I mean, we were feeling it. Everybody's feeling good. It's a good game. You know, the Wolves are dominating. I look up, and I'm like, yo, uh, they kind of catching up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with two yeah. yeah they like, still they're kind of catching up. And they got, I think, they, I think they got within one at one point. They after did. It was 101, 100 uh, to 101, I think it was. Yep, and then we yep. took it after that and put it up to, like, 107. Yep, but yep. They, 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 Fleet got that three-pointer. They called the timeout right yep. after. It just makes me – It's just there's, there's times where this team just sleeps a little bit at the wheel. And mm-hmm. Taxi Squad, no pun intended. So, <laughs> um, where I'm just like, and we saw this in the middle of the season, third yeah. quarters, they had trouble. But that was what was nice about that Denver game mm-hmm. was that mm-hmm. that 20 point lead stayed consistent throughout the entire game. Yeah, they were locked they in. They never yeah. let up. They and I was like, boys, yeah, let's go. As far as the Rockets game is concerned, like, you know, I just feel like this at, at one point in time last year, the year before, that's the game that they lose, bro. Yeah, because the team 100%. comes back, and you know now at that point, like you just, I don't know if they had the, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know if they Charisma, had the the, the not, swagger, not, maturity, yeah, this, the maturity, swagger. How do you want to phrase it to get through that confidence? Is yeah. a better word uh-huh. to get through that? You know, to to fight through, you know, a run like that where a team is caught up, and now you yep. know because it takes a lot of perseverance yep. to get through a team making a run, Absolutely. and now they have all the momentum, and now you got to swing it back, but. A couple steals, a couple fast break dunks. Anthony Edwards closes it. Been struggling. Been big time struggling. Oh, for but 20 from three-point land man, in his last it, 20 it's, attempts. It's, it's, and, but he's over 19 in his last three games. And it, then he had that one, though. Remember where his toe was just on the line? Yeah. He thought he had that yeah. Streak, but it was not. Yeah. So he, he's, he's been struggling. Right. But, but at the same time. His dunk at the end of the game, that Rockets game, yeah. to seal everything off. Solid. He, he was still attacking the rim, which is what it. I appreciate he with Ant. He still out. gets his layups, Anthony, and that doesn't seem to be the, an issue the, when the, he's cold shooting. The thing, and I've said this about now, nah, I've said this about Jaden McDaniels. I'm saying it uh, about Anthony Edwards because it's obvious. The thing I like most about them is when their shot is not falling, they stay engaged. And you can't say that for every player. You know, some guys, yeah. when the offense is going, then the defense really gets going. But in the case of these guys, no matter what, the defense gonna is going to be there. You know, he did a really good job of, you know, um, getting the ball to his teammates, allowing his teammates to kind of take over while he was off, getting to the free throw line, making all of his free throws, um, you know, just staying involved, getting still, staying involved in the basketball game and staying engaged enough to be locked in to close the game out. The Nuggets, though, Jason, you said, you know, I just want to see these two teams match up healthy so I can really get a beat. I've seen enough. You know? You think if we, enough, took them in a, if we take them in a series, we got it? If the Wolves, this is this is the kicker with the Wolves. Write this down. The first, right, all right. <laughs> write this down. Write this down. Don't forget this, folks. The Taking kicker this is Phil. the first round. Yeah. If you get out of the first oh, round, me, all that. bets, are, it, that's, if you get out of the first round, all bets are off. It's kind of like how I feel a similar, and I hate to say this publicly, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> Do it. I feel a similar way about 
not to take it to football, I feel a similar way about the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. If the Cowboys can oh, get Cowboys. out of the divisional round and get to an NFC Championship game, all bets are off. Because then that mental kind of curse is kind of off. And it's like, we could play free now. We don't have to worry about that pressure. You know, Same thing, you. you know, Caitlin Clark said. You, those first couple games in the tournament, she was just like, yeah, we were kind of stiff. We were kind of nervous because we didn't want to go out early. We're a one seed. You don't want to go out early. But then... Once you get further in the, in the in the tournament, that pressure, it sounds crazy, but it kind of falls off because now it's like, okay, you know, if you lose in this spot, it's not as bad. We're in the Elite Eight. If we lose in the Final Four, it's not as bad. We're in the Final Four. Yeah. I feel the same thing about the Timberwolves. Once they exceed that public expectation of getting out of the first round, if you could get to it, if they get to the conference finals and they play the, the Nuggets and they are healthy, they will beat the Nuggets. Ooh. They will beat the Woo. Nuggets. They just match up. Jason. They match up perfectly with Denver. They do. They match up. Well, we've you got the a, bigs. We've got the bigs. The over. bigs, and it, and it helps. And yeah. it helps immensely with Jokic. You got big bodies to throw at Jamal Murray. They got nobody to really check Anthony Edwards. He can get whatever he wants. Cat, Cat can really go off. It's a weird matchup with Aaron, with Aaron Gordon, though. It's a weird matchup. I actually say. like Nas a little bit more as a matchup for Aaron Gordon. But Cat can still dominate and take over games. I just like how they match up. Like, the length and the defense bothers the Nuggets every time they play, which is why, again, they said it last year. That was the team that gave us the most trouble because their length the length and defense bothers them a ton. Yeah. So, I'm confident mm-hmm. against I'm Denver. Excited. I'm oh, I'm very it. confident against I'm Denver. Excited. I'm truthfully confident against Denver. If They Man. they just got to continue to play their game. Play, play your game. Continue to play lights out defense. Anthony Edwards take over when it's time. They can beat Denver. They can eat. They, I won't say easily. But let's go. Six games. Let's go. Especially, especially, six games too. especially if you can get home court advantage. Now that's gonna be key. Which oh, is yeah. why, which so, is why this win over you're Denver. Me all excited over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just home saying. Oh, this boy. is why this win I over Denver. I've never heard of that in my steamy. lifetime. Home was, court advantage. I've never experienced that. Man, no, I mean, no, it's, it's no. right there. And now you know you you just beat Denver again. So now you got a two one lead on Denver. If you lose to Denver in Denver next time you play, because they play it one more time. Now the series, you know, this, uh, the season series is tied at two two. If you end with the same record. It's and divisional. in the series, the division record, the Wolves have the lead. Yeah, bro. we do. We have it against Thunder and the Nuggets. We mm-hmm. got that yep. tiebreaker. So, so uh, if, you keep winning, good. if you keep winning games Oof. and you end up with the same record or above the Denver Nuggets, that means Denver has to travel to Minnesota for most of the games. And I, I have the utmost faith in them at that at that point. And Oof. targets that just get out, man. just get out of the first round. Get that like off of your shoulders. Get that get that like weight off the shoulders. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you will see a stress free basketball I team hope, going forward. Because that's what I've been saying. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry, Jason, but oh, that's what I've been saying this whole time. When every time you guys have me on and we would talk Timberwolves all this year, I'd always say, let's just pump the brakes and get out of the first round. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy that you, who are very in tune with the T Wolves, more than I am. I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure, Jason, you would probably agree that 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 that, that excites me a little bit. Right? Oh, it excites me, too. I probably can't go as far as artists. I'm totally willing to admit because, again, I just can't get over just how we haven't gotten the no. full potential out of these matchups so far this season. So what, I are just, they? what are they, the Warriors with KD? We're not afraid of those guys. Mm. We're not afraid of those guys, man. They can be had. They can be had. That's okay. how I see it. They can be had. Okay. All right. They okay. can be had. Every game they played, this is the, and no. this is the last thing, and my, I'm sorry for interrupting you, Jason. You're doing a great job. The man. key <laughs> is going to be, the key is going to be how you close games. Your last, like your lineup closing games. Because one thing I will say about Denver, they know how to finish. So you can't yep. be turning the ball over at the very end. The series yep. against the Lakers in the conference finals, every game was decided by the last probably two minutes, three minutes of the fourth quarter. And at every turn against a guy like LeBron and Anthony Davis. They just simply made more plays down the stretch. They yeah. didn't turn the ball over. Jokic was on a mission. Jamal hit everything. That's what they tend to do in the playoffs. So it's going to be important to make sure the right lineup is out there. You know, whoever's hot, whoever's feeling it. I don't even – at this moment, you know, I would leave Jaden out there. You know, obviously, Ant, you know, maybe depending on how Nas is playing, maybe you leave Nas out there instead of, you know, Carl – you know, Rudy. Cool. I, I mean, we'll I like see. Him. I mean, flip yeah, it around. No, yeah. Maybe, maybe Cat has it going. It just, it just depends. What I like about Coach Finch is he really likes to flip up the, mo- the flip yeah. up the, the lineups. Like he said it in his post game conference. He's like, dude, like they, we all know it's a fluid lineup. Like the starting lineup is pretty much the same, but for the most part, if you're feeling it, you're out there, and if you're not, you're pulling it. Somebody else. It's all about the matchups. So he's, I, I not to be long winded. 
they can beat the they can beat the Nuggets. They can beat the Nuggets. I don't think they will as of right now. I I, I can't have the same confidence as you, Artis. I, I I just can't. I am optimistic over the win, but I still just see some issues with you know. The, the clutch points, no matter what, in the fourth quarter have just been an issue for it this team. Matter. They yes. are they are still not good. They're still a bottom, probably at least five to ten team in the NBA in the in the clutch rating, which is the final five minutes of a game. And so it's just I need to see that improve. I don't know how much that is going. I don't know how much time they have to improve that. Yeah. Um. I wonder. Yeah. And it will it will obviously depend who Denver faces in the first round too, because I could definitely see even a team like the Lakers artists giving Denver a little bit issue with their size as well. I know you're probably not as confident they because you think the Lakers are slow. The, the, yeah. the, the, the Nuggets have the I. Lakers. The Nuggets yeah. have the Lakers number. It's, it's, it's man. And that. guys, I, we can't discount the Thunder in all this too. That's I mean, true. We, we just can't. I mean, I like there's there's no guarantee too. that we can beat them in a series either. We got them in the and, mix though. Still. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think we yeah. still have the, the, the big game. Is very, um, the big is game we got good, but it's very slim. Yeah, very slim, mm-hmm. and can be kind of like, maneuvered around. Manu- you, yeah, you put Nas Reed on him or Rudy, he's gonna Rudy's gonna powerhouse. Yeah, him. even Jaden, Jaden, yeah, Jaden, you Jayden have can match up with they. They got wise. the matchups. They got the personnel to do it. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of making oh. the, making the plays when it matters. Yeah. What is what it will oh. come down. And Ant has like you can't keep playing like this. No, no, he, no. That's he has to be. A superstar in the playoffs in order for in order for it to work because like Jokic and SGA Murray, um, like the stars are going to be you know if you see LeBron in the first round, Steph, these guys are going to be there. So Ant has to shoot better from the three point line or at least get mm-hmm. to the rack at a higher clip in order to make it happen. But I don't know. I, yeah. I believe. But if Carl Anthony Towns is healthy, that might be the thing that puts it over the top. It really might. And we did get an update actually from oh, what do we got? Shams Sharania saying that uh, he believes that the that Carl Anthony Towns of the Wolves are optimistic that he could return before the end of the regular season. Oh, which if beautiful. he could get some regular season reps before the playoffs, that would be huge. Because again, I, I, as of sitting right now, if Carl Anthony Towns isn't a hundred percent in the playoffs. I don't know if I can see the Wolves beating the Nuggets in a seven-game series, but if he is not at all like Jimmy Butler was for the Wolves in the playoffs several years ago because he had the same injury, was not the same player whatsoever, then that is going to be the key. Uh, Because I think Carl Anthony Towns' three-point shooting probably could be one of the biggest X factors for For the Wolves, Uh, especially if if they're just trying to absorb everything that's coming into Rudy and double-team Rudy. They can count on the perimeter and have them shoot threes, and it just be nice. Might be nice to get our best three point shooter back on the court. Anyway, question so. before we wrap up the Timberwolves talk: Yes, do you think Nas Reed can win Sixth Man of the Year? Oh, absolutely! Yes. I think he should. With Mal- I think he should. With so Malik with Monk, Monk now being injured, with, uh, Malik yep. Monk being being hurt. Yep. And I also think back to the to he's the got eighteen thing, right cool. now. He's yeah. got eighteen. Yes, he he's does. He's having a up great 16. night. Up sixteen. Yeah. He was incredible against Houston. And and this is what I will say. And I hope that. I know Finch isn't going to hear what I have to say, but <laughs> I love it. Do not put Cat back in the starting lineup right away. I would. I no, would no, 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 no. Bring him in slowly. No, no, no. Keep, bring him no. in slowly. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. I bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in off the bench as like the sixth man to start, and then come playoff time. You know, you do want to have him in the lineup just for like a psyche kind of thing. Like yeah. he's one of the best players on the team. You don't want to have him thinking that you know we're moving on to Nas. You know what I mean? Like nah. You know, let, get the rotation back to what it was, but like bring him in slowly. Don't don't just throw him back in the lineup because that that would kind of shake things up, in my opinion, in a negative way to start, and they could come out a little clunky at the worst time. Yeah, yeah, I we, agree. We with definitely that got too. speed right now and big. We got a little combo of both. So yeah, it'd be, and honestly, it'd be nice if we kind of even if we don't have the number one seed, it would be nice in the last couple of games if we knew what our playoff seeding was going to be, so we can have the room to experiment and to be able to do these kind of things and not worry too many too much about players getting certain minutes or rehabbing players too much. We can just do that nice, smooth, and easy. But the way things are going right now in the Western Conference, I mean, I think this is going to go up to the last game of the season, guys. Ooh. I mean, we, I mean, the Dem- the last time we played Denver uh, is like the last one, two, or three games of the season or something. So it's coming down to the wire for the Timberwolves. It's just going to be so fun to watch. Obviously, the ownership stuff is a massive distraction, yeah. but I don't think that's affecting things on the court. I think you guys agree, too, and I think the players would also agree. Chris Finch right said that yeah. things aren't going uh aren't like affecting them but yeah could have some
some major repercussions next even year. going into next year with that luxury tax. <laughs> uh, because Grant Wankstern is here, I want to talk a little Twins baseball with oh. my guy because he is arguably the biggest Twins fan I know. He will be at the home opener tomorrow afternoon as the Twins take on the Cleveland Guardians first pitch at 310. But honestly, uh, I want to get your just feeling of just how you felt, how much the wind left your sails when you heard the news that Royce Lewis, I don't I know if you were watching the game, oh, you were watching it, I was listening studio. on the radio, yeah, I just how, defla- how deflating of a feeling was it for you to see this guy, one of the best prospects that the Twins have had since pretty much Byron Buxton, go out with another injury. First game of the season after hitting that home run in the first inning. And a man, double right after that. I know. I mean, dude, I just can't think of a more just bummer it's, way to start the season for the Twins, even though they did win the ball game ultimately against yeah. the Royals. And they took two or three for the Royals, had a bad game on the third run, which we, yeah. I, here's the deal. It's become right now to the point with the Twins that if it's Buxton, Lewis, I I have no reason to have any faith that they can stay on the field. Unfortunately, this year was a big part of that. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy about it, but at the same time, not right now because our offense, uh, besides today, the Twins, if you're watching, we're recording today, they just beat the Brewers and the undefeated Brewers in mm-hmm. a pretty good game. Ryan Jeffers hit a three-run home run. Paddock had an okay outing. I wouldn't say yeah. great, but um, what I what I like about this team is they've got a lot of guys that can fill in, and we learned that last year. They are deep, but the guys this year that were doing that last year are not. And we talked about this earlier, Jason. Matt Walner mm-hmm. can't hit the broad side of a barn with his bat. Yeah. Uh, Julian, slow start. Um, you know, what Castro has been a nice delight but it, as a replacement there. But Right. He's forced into things, though, with you the know, injury. Um, it's, it's Santana. I mean, some of these guys, these newer guys, it's just this team right now, yeah, the injury bug is a problem. It bums me out, but I'm also still on the high of it being so early in the season. If this was, you know, it's a, as we know, baseball. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a very overused term, but it's true. So right now, we we have to look at it by quarter or you know quarter of a season. Right now, yeah. if he's out for this quarter of the season, but then rocks out the last three quarters of the season, I'm okay with it because it's a long. I know, haul. but he's if he's out for two months though, that uh, is that is bad. just that sucks, man. It sucks. I uh, trust me. I mean, quad, quads are tricky. I get it. Um, Everything he has, though, is like his oblique, his quad. It's legs. Mm. It's legs. It's, it's legs. That injury. That and his one, knees. He's had two knee legs. injuries. Remember when he was playing center field two years ago? When he should yeah. have? And yeah. And for some reason, why we put him in center field? What was the worst decision to put a player in the outfield? Him in center field or Miguel Sano in right field for a hot second there? Remember that Ooh. bit? How fun was that? I would say that? Miguel Sano in right field because that, that man was couldn't fun. move. That was couldn't fun. Move. And he wasn't, and not to get into this kind of conversation, but he wasn't in the best of shape That's either, which saying. Miguel Sano move. tended to be in He's before spring trainings. Did he sign with the Angels or something? He is he, with the, is he, is he up Angels. with the roster right now? Or I don't is it know AAA? if he's up, but he looks good. He's lean. He yeah, finally figured out how to have an off-season diet. I hate <laughs> to say it, and I will say this. Everybody who's a Twins fan knows this. He would come back every season overweight. Because he'd go home to mama's cooking and couldn't mm. stop himself from eating. And then he would literally just have to be. I mean, there was one year where he was n- like not on the roster because he had to lose weight. It's it's one of those Jeez. things. And I, and I get it. Weight is. I'm not trying to weight shame anybody here. But for a man that you invest that much money in, how do you not just send a nutritionist down to home with him to make sure that he's eating properly? Uh, that uh, <laughs> He's also a professional athlete. Like, come on. Oh, man. there's that. There's come that. On, but oh, yeah, I think he's. I don't know if he's. Up with the with the Angels right okay. now, but well, yeah, that was whatever. the worst move. Right field, Miguel Sano. That was a desperation yeah. move for show. For and sure. kind of the bummer about all this situation too. Again, this speaks to the injury of the Twins right now. Is Brooks Lee, one of our top prospects, is out with back issues oh, right now, I didn't know that. and he could have been a potential option to call up in this situation. They could have maybe potentially played him at third base, maybe even moved Correa over to third base, which I think is potentially an option for Correa as he gets later on in his career when maybe, you know, he doesn't get as swift a foot as a shortstop, but he's dealing with some stuff too. So and now I know, um, uh, who's uh, Austin Miller came up. Yeah. Yeah. Austin Miller, but who's the, the Trevor Jenkins, I think is our overall top prospect, but I don't think he's going to be ready for a long time. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I agree with you, Grant. I'm not too worried about like stuff with the rotation right now. Paddock looked okay. Louie looked okay. Bailey Ober though. Oh, I'm willing to give Bailey a little bit. Um, um, you know, he had an ERA of like three, four He's last right, year, but... pitched a lot of innings, got a lot of starts. Wasn't so great in the playoffs against Houston, but 
man, it just the fastballs were cookies. It wasn't look it didn't look like it was a velo issue. He was getting in the mid nineties and everything. It just he the location e- was just he hung and everything. it was every pitch, dude. It was every fastballs, pitch. changeups. It it was literally he didn't have a single pitch working. He for him. had it was movement. Unfortunate. He had movement. Yeah, right but he over the plate. He was going right over the plate. Two seamers dropping, starting on the Those right and going right over the plate. Sliding right into the center yeah. of the plate. I mean, in his curve, I mean, everything. Yeah. He had movement. He had everything. Uh-huh. It's just he wasn't placing his pitches right. No. It's early. There's it's a early. lot lot to have here. The biggest concern that I have with the Twins right now until today was their lack of offense. Mm-hmm. They weren't. It, nobody's hitting the ball. Yep. You know, besides we got, Buxton and Kirilov, and the, like and really Kirilov, those two. Like, Kirilov's good. Kirilov looks like he's either put on some muscle. He's grown out the beard. I don't know if he has the power of Samson right now or anything with all the hair going on, but he's hitting like over four hundred right now. Yeah. And he and again, he has such a smooth swing. I really he like does. Kirilov's swing. I know I'm not the only person that said it, but if he if he can stay healthy, healthy more than anything, that hand and injury. Yeah. Which again, if we go back to like the Royce Lewis stuff, I'm a little bit more optimistic about Kirilov's injury history moving forward because. Because it's not legs as opposed to Royce Lewis stuff because it is legs. Um, but still, yeah. uh, an okay start for the Minnesota Twins. Not so good. Not so great. The play has been okay. It's just, again, the injuries. It's just it, it, it's overhanging it's this team. And it's, and it's happening to players that just have a repeated history of it. And it's so disappointing when Byron Buxton and Royce Lewis have arguably been, have been like the top prospects in this organization over the last 10 years, and yet the parallels between their injury histories is starting to become all too common. Yeah. And not to say that Royce can't figure this out later on in his career, but it's just we've been through this with Byron Buxton already as Twins fans, and now it just feels like we're going to have to go through it again with Royce Lewis. It's just... That's Man, just, that's just. Let's that hope we stinks. can keep Buxton healthy. At yes. least we can keep one of them. Just a positive thing. And, yes. I, and outside of, I mean, we've been harping on Buxton and and Lewis, but we've also our bullpens down right now. Theobar, Duran. Duran yep. I mean, it, there's. Another. But Jackson Stewart looked pretty good at the end there. I was feeling pretty good about both of them because they yeah. had good springs. Cole Stewart in particular, I'm feeling yeah. pretty pretty good about. And yeah. I thought he was awesome last year. He got hurt. Kind of towards the end, he wasn't as available yeah. at the end of last year. But I, I'm, I'm okay with how things are going right now. And I think Griffin Jackson has gotten his control issues back a little bit. And I know Declan Goff loves Griffin Jackson. Yeah, so he and needs he had to a, be in a well, position. He had a great position spring. for a while. Here. He had a great spring. So yeah. I have to say right now, I give if Declan's been pumping his uh, pumping up Jacks, I have to mm-hmm. agree. Jacks doesn't give me the nerves that he gave me last year. Not yet, not, not yet. yet. But I mean, from what I've seen so far in the preseason, um, but. I was going to ask you, just, you know, I don't know where we're at with wrapping this segment up. But uh, we got a couple minutes here. Who do you think, if we want to do Vikings, because I think we should still do a okay, little yeah, bit of Vikings, yeah, sure. but before one question, who do you think is going to win the division and who do you think is going to take second in the division? I know it's the beginning of the year, but just completely out out there. I did predict last week that the Twins would win uh, eighty nine. They go eighty nine and seventy three. I okay. couldn't give them ninety. I couldn't give them ninety because they just didn't deserve to be given a ninety ninety one. I'm going to go ninety one just for that. Me okay, and sounds good. Bet. Perfect. Just, perfect. Just we'll split the middle. Bet, they'll lunch. go. Ni- they'll watch. They'll go ninety and seventy two now. <laughs> um, what was your question again? I'm sorry. Who's going to finish first? Who's going to finish okay. second in okay. our division? Us. Second, probably the Tigers. That's right. They're kind of up in the coming team. Um, I know they probably can't truly, truly compete until Javi Baez is off of their payroll. My my God, if you think Matt Walner swings and misses a crap, you just got to watch some Javi Baez highlights. Mm-hmm. You can ask AJ Fredrickson about it, that because he knew all about that when Javi Baez was with the Cubs. Uh, he is kind of a detriment to their payroll, so I don't think like the Tigers weren't able to go out and spend a lot of free agency money uh, this offseason. They got even some good though, pitching, though. They got my, yeah. I mean, they yeah. Are and I, I assume actually the Tigers probably have a higher payroll than the Twins. I, I don't know. So. I wouldn't be shocked by that. Yeah. Um, but they yeah, might be I a don't. Sneaky surprise. I think they'll at best maybe. 500, but oh, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe, maybe sneaky, but I, I think the Guardians will come back down because they just slowly Their pitching but surely, staff is still they're good, good, but slowly but surely each and every year they've gotten worse and worse and worse as they, yeah. as they stripped payroll. And because I just think they're trying to bottom out, but they're just such a, they're so good at developing talent that they just can't. I'm not worried about the Royals. Or the, um, the White Sox. Those. I mean, the, the White, White Sox, Sox are a complete no, rebuild. So. No, the White Sox sold off a bunch of pieces, and man, that was supposed to t- be Cease. the team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've had so yeah, many good pitches. I know. They just get rid of I mean, the That White team Sox. was supposed to pop in 2021, 2022. They were supposed to be the cream of the crop for this division for years to and come. They to be, and yeah. it just imploded. Yeah, That's what I'm you happy. get for hiring <laughs> so old. Happy. 
I know. That's what you get for hiring old dudes like Tony LaRusso. What were you thinking? Hiring yeah, Tony LaRusso. That La was a bad move. Oh, my goodness. But thank you for that Twins talk. I yeah. appreciate oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for coming on for a little Twins talk. Yeah. Yes, they're bad. And I just like to sit back for the fans wondering why I don't say anything. I just like to sit back Artists and listen just, and, be, yeah. and be educated because I don't know a lick of baseball. No, and I'll be darned if I say something and everybody like, what the hell is he talking about? It's because right. I don't know anything. So what so. we're going to do, not to, not to change how you pr- take, uh, how you will be able to analyze baseball, but yes. because that comment right there, you have to promise me that this summer, five games, you and me. And All right, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, let's five, do it. Five just, games. We'll go down, we'll grab some beers, get yes. a hot dog, we'll sit down, enjoy this. Just five games. Just come yeah. with me and just enjoy the season. Good yes. quote, Mike I'm with Tice. It. I'm with it. All, All right, right, cool. That's cool. the deal. All right. All right, fantastic. See you at Target Field, boys. Have fun at Target Field tomorrow. Grant, mm-hmm. enjoy the home opener. Hope everybody who's listening and watching also has a wonderful time at the home opener, too. Um, yeah, we got to wrap up the show. We're kind of getting uh, in the time limit here. I was going to maybe bring up some Drake May steam that was coming up with the Vikings. Jeremy Fowler did say that, let me get the quote, that he said the Vikings could be a perfect scenario for I him. There's it. a belief among same teams that Minnesota could try to trade up to get Drake May. But look, I think with all the McCarthy stuff that we had going on, now it seems like there's a lot of May steam going on. I think we are now in the peak of smokescreen season, gentlemen. Yeah, nobody knows what's going on. And that's on. why I didn't know if I wanted to bring it up. There wasn't a lot of other Viking steam this week besides this. Um, but, you know, I mean, Stefan Diggs getting uh-huh. traded, <laughs> traded away. That's... And uh, the only reason I bring it up because it turned out that the second round pick that we traded to the Houston Texans is the compensation that the Buffalo Bills will be receiving in return for Stefan Diggs. Just finds his way to get traded off of teams. Huh, uh, funny well, how that kind of works with Diggs. I, I bet you he plays for a few more teams before his career is over. Now, I got one question because you're talking about picks. So we're talking about trading up. And I know we were trying to run this out, but let's mm-hmm. just... I got, really quick. We got, we got, we got, we got time. I, I, we got time. We have 50 minutes. We normally we, we go and hours I'm, And sometimes. I'm also going to have one last thing to say outside of football. But I got. A, I just want to ask. So Detroit has our third round pick this year at 73. We were traded to them. We do not have a second round pick this year. We do not have a second round pick next year. And the closest pick we have this year after our first and our 23rd is at 108th at fourth round pick. What capital do we have? To make because every team knows that we're trying to get a quarterback. Yeah, oh every yeah. team knows we're desperate to get a quarterback. Every team knows we got two first round picks, but we ain't got Jack after that. Do we have a first round pick next year? Yes, and we then do. We have enough to move up because it's but probably going to cost three, three first round, round picks to get one of these quarterbacks. Look, you, I don't know if I, I don't think I want to do that. Three first round picks. You better have a guy. You better be yeah. right. You better yeah. be right. Because yeah. right. yeah. if you are wrong, you are in turmoil for the next. However many years, <laughs> and then like next year, like I said, we don't have it. So if we trade that first round pick na- to get move up, and let's say this guy doesn't work out, we don't have a second round pick next year either. So we're not even picking till the third round of twenty twenty five with a guy that may or may not be our court. Oh god! But but if, but if he's our guy. We don't, we don't give a care. We aren't going to care. We aren't going to give a damn because it's going to be totally worth it. And we're going to be sh- basking in the glory of finally finding a franchise quarterback for this Vikings team. We're not going to worry about that. Chiefs fans don't worry about that with Patrick Mahomes. Bills fans don't worry about that with Josh Allen. No. We won't have to worry about that if we Hopefully. hit. But if we don't, then we do. Then <laughs> oh, it's man, gonna it's be gonna great be to talk about. That, that's what makes the draft <laughs> this year so, so this intriguing. Is, this is the most anticipation I've ever had for a draft yeah. even like when we were drafting ponder not even close not even close because the quarterbacks weren't, weren't that good in that exactly. draft exactly mm-hmm. this is this is the most I mean, and this is just an obvious statement. It's the most excitement i've had going into a draft and i was on here before saying i wanted to keep kirk cousins not at that price i'm so glad we didn't i'm so glad we made all these free agent moves yeah. and these picks it makes i've never been so excited for a draft or a draft party, aka you guys, you have yes. the one, you know, yeah, draft party yeah. at the Fillmore. Yes. Are, you, are you going to be there? I actually am not going to be able to be there because I am hosting a twin suite that oh, night. Oh, that's oh, the same God. night. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, dang it! I wanted to join you yeah, for that. Unfortunately, I have to, I'm, I'm, I'm hosting a twin suite okay. that night, so I will be at the okay. Twins game rooting out my boys. But yeah, I just maybe after exciting. the game though. Yeah, you can swing by. Right it's over. all downtown. You yeah, can swing by. Maybe. I mean, absolutely. Crazy Absolutely. trades back or something. Maybe, you know, end up with the 30-second pick, and then we get to that point, and then, oh, Vikings trade back into early in the first we round. We do have three third-rounders next year, though. Okay. That's that's, that's nice. Okay. That's a positive. All right. All right. Yeah. Three so. third-rounders next year. Okay. <laughs> Again, 
get crazy. Just get your guy, and we won't care. That's yeah, right. we won't guy, care. We will guy. let all the mock drafters deal with the draft capital that we do or don't have. If you got a guy that can sling that pigskin for us and get us to a Super Bowl, yeah, that's all that matters. Yep, that is all that matters. All right, guys, we got to wrap up Taxi Squad for one, the week. <laughs> what do you got? You got one more. more. Grant's always got one more for us. We got a shout out. What was an amazing basketball game? Iowa LSU. It was great. Caitlin Clark and uh, Angie. Is it Angie Reese? Uh, Angel. Angel, 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 Angel Reese. Reese. Both those two girls were beautiful playing. I mean, that was a badass game. Awesome. It's a shame it was an Elite Eight matchup. It, it, just, I wish it, it could have been a Final Four. Why point, did they? Why did they put LSU and Iowa in the same? They did that. I, I don't know. Maybe because they the didn't want bracket. to have a potential rematch. I don't know. In the championship, Do you but not 12, want ratings. I, I get it, but you got them in the Elite Eight. Yeah. And 12.3 million viewers Guys, tuned in at the most watched game in women's that, college basketball history. More than the Super, or not more than the Super Bowl, but more than the World Series. Yes, every World Series game, all but one NBA final game Thank as you. well. And this is the Elite Eight of NCAA Women's Don't March. forget so, Caitlin Clark, Go! my girl. And also, don't forget about Juju Watkins yes. and Paige Becker. She's oh, the future. USC, she was the future. USC, USC yes. and uh, UConn. That was also a great basketball. <laughs> Fantastic. Women's basketball, Mainly college basketball now, in my opinion, is in such a special place. And when these it's ladies so go the to rise. the pros, like Angel uh, Angel Reese just announced she's going, going pro. Cool. Yeah. When all of them go pro, it's going to take the game to another the, level. The WNBA next year is going to gain a lot of talent. But like yes. you said, there are mm-hmm. pay, you got Paige, you got you got Paige Beckers, you got Juju Watkins. I think she. I don't know if she'll be back next next season. You think yeah, she's going to already declared? No, 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 no. For, I, I think there's a rule where is like, there a rule for? It's either like maybe. you can't declare for the WNBA. She's a freshman. Yeah, she maybe there isn't. I don't well, know, but they told usually her to go pro. stay. What's the, uh, the coach for UConn told her to go pro in the in the uh, in the uh, like uh, crossing okay. line or the okay. shaking okay. line at the okay. end. So I hope I she mean, sticks around for college because hmm. she's a she's a astounding player, yes. and I love watching her play at USC. And I hope that we can keep her for another. You know, keep this. Keep and I. I'm not demeaning NCAA women's basketball, but there is some hype and there is some thunder and there is some fire behind it that. I am loving. loving. Yeah, and it I hasn't am, been in what, a long time. And what a perfect time for all of these stars to hit as the NIL money hits as well. The right. marketability for these players has never been anything like we've seen, but they're also peaking at the same time. It's just a perfect blend of a talent and money-making ability as well. It, it's just great. This this is the first time ever I can definitively say that March Madness on the women's side is a thousand times more compelling than March Madness on the guys' side. I and agree. I know that UConn is blowing people out and everything, and that's been awesome and fun to watch, but it's just not nearly as compelling as getting to see Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers playing the final four, which I'm disappointed that they have to play not for the national championship, but in the final four. By the way, I got to root. I got to root. Home, home, hometown. I got to root for Paige. I got to root for Paige. I'm, I'm sorry. This. Who I'm hates Iowa? We Paige. hate I'm Iowa. Proud we of Paige. Gotta... We, who hates Iowa? <laughs> yes. We love Caitlin Clark. Yes. That's yes. what I'm going to yes. say. Yes. I hate Iowa, but I love Caitlin Clark, I know. and I love Paige, it's too. It's fun when yes. you have a player that can transcend rivalries. Yes. Because I don't hear any Gopher fans Whining or complaining Every about an I- about this fan. happening to Iowa, I think everybody's just embracing the greatness. Yes, of and what's that's going a, on. and that's a switch over to the men's side. Come on, Zach Eady. Come on, <laughs> Zach Eady, bro. Seriously. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Purdue. Purdue. Oh, so come on, Zach Eady. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. validation for that. Win guy. this championship so I can win my first ever bracket. Oh, challenge. is this for you oh, for a bracket? Bro, my first ever. I'm sitting in third place. If Purdue wins, I win multiple bracket challenges. Oh, boy. So I need and they, their next game is on my birthday this Saturday. Who I they need hey, who they happy playing? birthday. Uh, they play the, who they play this weekend? They play, I think NC State. Yes, NC okay. State. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I'm, I'm no, DJ Burns, man. No. I'm DJ so, Burns, is, I, it's such a story. No. It's such a story. It's such a that story. is a great story, but no, the, this, the story ends now. Let's I want go, you to get Zach paid. Eady. I want There's you to get paid. Championship yes, I, need I need it. Oh, oh my God. It's going to be compelling no matter what. Oh, and that was I'm a wrap sure we, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that was a wrap up. Uh, we can talk about that next week on Taxi Squad 2. And obviously, anything else going on with Minnesota sports, we will continue to break down anything going on with the Timberwolves. Any updates, obviously, going on with ownership, we will keep you updated with that. Twins going on. Wild kind of you know, fading a little bit, didn't bring them up at all today. And obviously there's decent reason for that. But if anything happens, we'll cover that as well. And obviously we're just getting closer and closer and closer to the NFL draft. Oh, it's boys. April, gentlemen. We are in boys. the month of the NFL draft. 
and I'm so excited. Who are we going to take at quarterback? Might be Drake May. Might be J.J. McCarthy. We'll just have to find out. Woo! Anyway, great show, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for watching and listening. That's Artist Woods. That's Grant Winkster, and I am Jason Stormer, and we will talk to you on the next time on Taxi Squad. Take care. Bye-bye.